dear brothers and sisters, um, I was thinking about uh, two options for today's homily, um, and I made this decision. Yesterday I received um, a very good video, it's an interview with faith leaders in this country about the impact of COVID-19 on faith. I put this video on YouTube and on our Facebook page. You will see the blue uh, kind of background, COVID-19 and its impact. That's the title. And uh, I'm encouraging all of us uh, that after the service or in the coming days, please visit and listen to what these faith leaders say. And then think about it from your own perspective because it's a very important experience for the Church and uh, all of us have a say on it and we need to find the wisdom and the solution together. These are fascinating interviews from people who are really committed to their uh, uh, communities. But as for today, I brought a brief meditation on today's Gospel readings and on the detail of the um, of the icon, what uh, can be seen uh, on our uh, page, uh, on our screen. Um, our readings put on display our Christian dignity. I place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. Should he open, one shall close, should he close, none shall open. He will become a throne of glory for his father's house. We read it in Isaiah in our first reading. This shows the dignity of Christ's mission and indirectly it shows the dignity of the Christian soul in our relationship to the office which is given to our Lord. An image comes to our mind. You remember when the Queen knights people who has a worthy achievement uh, to be presented for the knighthood. This sentence from Isaiah, as it were, uh, is are being knighted again indirectly by the Father because we join in this mission of Christ. All of our readings invite us to see ourselves on the side of Christ while he is carrying out this mission. It is very important in life to have a purpose, to have a mission, to be sent to do something, to carry out uh, something inspiring, either in terms of daily work or in terms of love and compassion. So our second reading also invites us to see the dignity which the participation in our Lord's work entrusts upon us. That is why we pray, we prayed in the response of your psalm, I thank you Lord with all my heart, you have heard the words of my mouth. This image from our responsorial psalm highlights the role of our mouth, the service of our mouth, in terms of the importance of a permanent and regular prayer life. Thus, as our second reading shows us, we can contemplate when we glory God, how rich are the depths of God, how deep his wisdom and knowledge, and how impossible to penetrate his motives and understand his methods. Who could ever know the mind of the Lord? To him be glory for ever. We read St. Paul's words. Regular prayer, both in words and charity, 
will enable us to repeat Peter's confession. Contemplating the dignity of our mission on the side of our Lord will make us to say and confess the same thing. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us think about it. What happens when we share these words? Even if we repeat it with Peter, we feel that our heart is being lifted up and our mind becomes focused. We experience joy. But let us imagine it and put it into practice. What happens when we, re when we repeat this confession many times in many situations. This prayer will make a wonderful difference. Just as when we read, when we pray the, the Rosary, uh, the Hail Marys, let us repeat these prayers on a regular basis. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. This prayer makes a wonderful difference. Our joy will be increased, the wounds we cause to others in a mysterious way will be healed, because this prayer contains our sorry. And the wounds, the wounds we receive from others will be healed, because our focus shifts to the glory of the Lord and our heart and our world will become more beautiful. At least it will get closer to the beauty where it is supposed to be. So dear brother and sister, in this coming week let us recall Peter's confession these words, you are the Christ the Son of the Living God. And when we repeat it, when we make it as our prayer, we are going to get a bit closer to where we supposed to be. Let me share a detail of an icon with you. You can see it on the top of your screen. It's a detail of the face of Christ. And let me adjust it a bit, because it seems that uh, by a zoom uh, it is covered a bit out. Just a second. making that corner disappear. So when we have a look at this uh, icon, we can see the mouth of our Lord um, and his, uh, his throat. What strikes us that um, his lips are covered with light. His throat, his neck, is covered with beautiful divine light. So I'd like us to make a little exercise whenever we recall this icon or when we when we revisit on YouTube on our on our on our on or on our Facebook page. The exercise is simple. Let us contemplate the beauty of Christ's divine lips. All his teaching, his wonderful teaching, was pronounced through those divine lips. Let us see in it the wisdom of the eternal Son of God. We can contemplate his outpouring and healing love, the words of his teaching ministry, and we can also almost hear that these lips pronounced 
the words of healing when our Lord healed someone. These lips spoke to Peter. These lips spoke to the Father and they are speaking to us. The exercise is to link in our imagination our own mouth to that of the Saviour. In a silent moment just let us imagine a hidden invisible thread between our mouth and the mouth of our Lord. Let us imitate him. Let us want to hear the positivity of his words which left his lips, the thoughts which were formed into words, which words went through his throat and tongue. When I'm watching the, the news on, on television, I often feel sorry for the newsreaders. Just imagine they are sitting there and they have to read up all the bad news of the world and all that negativity has to go through their mouth, through their thought, thoughts, through their body. That's why it is a healing image. Let the love of our Lord purify our thoughts, our mouth and our breathing. Let us try to be a bit conscious of what we say in this coming week. Let we speak and think and act as Jesus intends us to speak, think and act. And let our first words be, before anything else that follows, like good resolutions, prayers, let our first words be those of Saint Peter. Let these words be our prayer before we continue our Eucharist. So let us pray, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen.